Hi, I'm Dr. Eti Ben Shabbat from Brain Rehab Academy. And in this video, I'd like to speak with you about how stroke is identified with MRIs. Following my last video, I got lots of questions about identifying stroke with MRIs. So in this video, I'd like to talk in detail about how MRIs are used in the context of strokes. It is important for you to know what to expect in the film bag of someone who had stroke because it will help you understand what specifically you need to look at. If you know what you're looking at, then you'll be able to extract the rehab information that you need. And by the way, this information can't be found in the radiology report because the radiology report will give you all the diagnostic information you need. It's not going to help you with identifying the potential for recovery of this person. In my previous video, I mentioned DWI and ADC sequences. DWI stands for Diffusion Weighted Imaging and ADC stands for Apparent Diffusion Coefficient. But what are sequences? What does that word actually mean? Sequences are actually sets of images that give you specific information. They were taken for a specific purpose. As you know, MRIs are exquisitely sensitive to different types of tissue and different types of pathological processes. Over the years, physicists developed various sequences to enable clinicians to dissociate between various tissues and between various pathological processes. By the way, physicists are continuing to develop new sequences all the time. And when a new sequence is invented, then researchers examine how useful it is, how reliable it is, how um, valid it is. And then if it's found to be useful and reliable and valid, then it's introduced cl clinically. Once clinicians take it up, then you can start seeing it in the film bag. And the point there is that brain imaging evolves all the time. As I said before, each sequence highlights specific tissue or specific pathological process. You probably heard of T1 and T2 sequences. T1 sequences highlight fatty tissue within the brain, whilst T2, for example, highlights water content within the brain. Flare is another sequence you might have heard of, and flare is really important for showing intraparenchymal inflammation. In the context of stroke, the most important sequences are DWI and ADC. And the reason they're so important is because the most common form of stroke is an infarct. And when a tissue is in fact, DWI and ADC are very sensitive to this pathological process. They show in fact a tissue within minutes. What does this mean to you as a rehabilitation clinician? It means that if you're looking at an MRI of someone who had a stroke, you want to go straight away to the DWI and ADC sequences. That is if they had an, an in fact. Those specific sequences will show you exactly the location of the lesion. And once you know exactly which structures are affected, you'll be able to analyze what sort of functions you're expecting to be problematic. As I mentioned in my previous video, MRIs used to be the first line of scans taken for people who were suspected of having strokes. This has changed though, and now the first line of scans is CTs. In my next video, I'll explain how to diagnose strokes without MRIs and how to diagnose strokes really early. I will also explain why CTs have taken over MRIs as the first line of scans. If you enjoyed this video, I'll be grateful if you can share it with your colleagues. And if you want to learn more about how brain imaging can be used in the rehab context, head to my website www.brainrehabilitation.org and you can find more information there as well as long and short courses. I'll see you in the next video.